<clears throat> Hi, it's Mayo. I'm back. I told you this would be part two of the plastic ocean. And um, I wanted to show you about a value chart the kids and I, my students make. We make these blocks. One, two, three, four, and five. And here we start with light. Second, a little bit more third, medium, fourth, and the darkest. And this exercise will help you move that water bead I talk about and control the water with more water, less water, and work it down left to right, your brush all the way down. And here's your blocks. This will help you when it comes to working with water, how much water to use, and of course, your values. So I wanted to show you that. And a lot of times the kids and I will just do small little watercolors. This is um, this is just a three by four, and this helps too working with water. You start at the top, you pre-wet it with the clear water, and you can leave white spots too. That helps you trap, and um, that's without using rubber cement or um, uh, I forget what you call it. But it's a block you can use. Many watercolor artists will use it. Um, but And so the kids start with little palettes. And this is like a, this one is a six, one, two, three, a five palette or six palette, six color mixed palette. This one is a six color mixed palette. And those are good exercises for you. I just wanted to make you aware of that. And we're going to finish a little detail on here. Uh, this is the plastic ocean part two so I wanted to show you that I was talking about repeatograph so I'm just going to do a little work here and just outline and keep my head out of the way sorry about my head it was in the last video a little bit the top of my head when I was working on the details of the plastic ocean and you just can outline the eyes with these repeatograph. See? It's very tiny, that's why. Making sure you can see. Okay. And there you go. That's a good view. Better view than yesterday. And then I just go ahead and just outline some of her mouth and bring it out. And her pupil. We can get a little bit round like this. And it's not really a repeatograph. It's called a millennium. It's kind of like um, a repeat, the old repeatograph pens. But you don't have to take it apart and clean the clogs. And it's got a little tube. See, and the ink runs even. So you have to have pretty steady hand. So we're just going to do a little fine detail on our octopus here. Line variation around the head. Squid head. A little here. You know what line variation is. You don't have to talk about light source on this one because the light source is in the ocean. So... And then we have our octopus eyes here, and our octopus eyes here. I'm just going to go around and around like that a little bit. Just bring it out a little bit. Maybe her eyebrows. It's nice to work with these pens. You can outline when you do uh, this. This was the little suction cups. Remember, I used the rubber cement and I dropped it in with this little straw, a tiny straw. It works good, and I made the circles. So I'm just going to outline some things, not a lot. Just clean it up. In fact, I might even use a thinner one. You have different. Here's. Um, Here's a zero one, very fine. This one's heavy. 
this one's fine. So I'm just going to use this fine one. 0 0.03. Is this repeatograph? I don't want to do a lot with the pen because I like watercolors and the way they look, but we'll do a little. And we can even go around the suction cups a little bit. We can outline them a little bit. Funny thing about this octopus, I don't know if any of you are going to notice, so maybe I shouldn't say anything. I gave him too many legs, but we have the bottle over here, remember? I'm just going to outline it a little bit. And our ellipse. Here's our plastic. I like that plastic. Oh yeah, I was going to, um, I do like some of these spots, so I probably will just leave them as is. Here, I'm going to work, I told you, on the skeleton I created. The eye. And his head. Just a little bit. Not a lot. I'm just going to do a little bit with this so-called ink pen. The ink flows so even because it's in a form of a pin and a needle. I just wanted to outline him a little bit and outline some of it. We don't want to do a lot. I actually like the tentacles like this. So, um, if anything, I might just bright bring his backbone in, pop him out a little bit, and turn the page. maybe outline remember the hand will follow the eye so always look ahead not where you're at look at where you're going I can't repeat that enough I have three four five six year olds that stop squiggling and make pretty straight lines when I give them this idea on this technique look ahead don't look at where you're at. It helps. I outlined that one a little bit. And we can outline his skull here too. We can finish since we are outlining. A little bit. And in here. It's a fantastic round human in the ocean. There you go. I'm going to leave the plastic see-through. Uh, we can come up here and just maybe <clears throat> outline the whale a little bit. I like his barnacle and his fin here. His eye is going to be in here. Just a little bit. Big, beautiful tail, his spout, and around. Um, we can just take the plastic fork and just lightly go around it. And of course, the plastic knife. And we got some plastic here. Here we have a straw. In the turtle's nose. I'm just going to outline that and I'm just going to put his nostril there. Another beautiful turtle. A sea turtle. I give him a little bit of an outline. I like the way he looks actually. So just a little. Clean it up a little bit. I couldn't do it in the last one. I don't want to run my videos. And we'll leave this. I don't mind that. It just pops them out a little bit. I don't hear many people talk about line variation, but 
I know light and shadow is very important. And that can create everything. All your shapes just studying light and shadow. But <clears throat> here we go. Let's see. Uh, I like it. Maybe a little here. Here. And you can just do, if you wanted to, your little suction cups on the octopus. We can give that indication on some of them. Here, here, leave some of them light. Some of my kids, <clears throat> use the rubber cement to use for blue. You can use that. Or it's frisket. I just remembered it. Frisket, but it's more expensive. And the rubber cement seems to be effective, so I like to use rubber cement. And it blacks out all these little tentacles here. We can outline some of them. So I just want to show you, okay, and in here maybe a little bit of variation, it goes underneath and around, there you go, and some in here, depending on where they're at. Uh, and in here, it's my version of the octopus. I believe they have three hearts. I'll have to check that out, but I remember reading that. So I just kind of lightly, this is a 0 0.03, so it's a nice, just a, a little bit of a an outline here and there. On my octopus. This is a bottle here, so you can just give it that little ellipse right here. He's got another, he's picking up a lot. Our octopus is cleaning up the ocean. It's fine. Test it here. We got another bottle here. Make the ellipse at the top. Turn your page and make around. I have one student that draws ovals and shapes better upside down. <clears throat> so just remember that. You can turn your paper upside down and sometimes for some reason it is more effective for some students. I just want to outline a little bit. I like when you run the pass of the rubber cement. When you make the circles, it helps. It's very effective. Um, look at that for a second because I'll show you. I don't know if I have it out, but maybe I'll look for it later. Um... I wanted to show you something. That's okay. I don't seem to find it, but I was going to show you a, a giraffe I did by using this method. So we got here, 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 and then we'll just finish up with some cleaning up. I told you. I wanted to show you that you should make that chart if you're new to water, even if you're not new to watercolors. You should make your value chart. It's very important. It does help you learn how to use water and learn how to um, make the different values from light to dark and, and then run the bead left and right and bring it down. It, it does. It's very effective. <clears throat> Good exercise.
So I'm just going to finish here and then we'll move on. I think I'm going to do a watercolor with Santa Claus in a few, the next one, so because of the holiday. An old fashioned Santa. Here we got this. And then we have some more circles here. I'm just outlining them a little bit, a little line variation on the suction cups. We have a bottle here and another little. It's holding this one. Black and white is great because you can really use your imagination. And have fun at the same time. So this is basically what I wanted to show you today. These nice, this one is a Millennium. It's called a Millennium. And it's called a Zig. It's a Zig. Let's see. Yep, Zig Memory System. Literally. Great for memory books, pigment ink, photo, acid-free, light, fast, waterproof, fade-proof. This is a good pen to use for outlining your work. So, I think that's where we're going to end. I don't want to outline too much because I like the look of the watercolor. I'll do the whale. So he shows up. We'll leave the plastic light. We got this guy in here. Oh yeah, we're going to have plastic going in his mouth. I'll just line it up really a little bit. And he's got his little balls here because he's kind of a, uh, a coral, a part of the coral reef, but he's human. And I do like the turtle, so I'm pretty much finished. I just wanted to... Oh, yeah, let's do our little city here. This is where all the resorts take up the whole beach so the turtles can't lay their eggs anymore. I sure hope they're working on protecting areas. And I know they are, so I'm going to stay positive. They're leaving designated areas for... They, these giant sea turtles come up every so often... I don't know how many years, but they lay a lot of eggs and they need that beach, undisturbed beach to do that. So I'm, I know the resorts are being more aware of that and we're trying to keep our turtles. So here's the little town or their little resort town and the island there. So uh, I'm going to leave all the plastic light in the ocean, a little bit on the starfish with the pen, and one more knife, plastic knife, individual plastic. That is the problem. We have to stop using individual plastics. And, uh, you know, these small water bottles I see people die oh, buy, oh, it kills me. So, and other than that, I think we're finished. So thank you for watching again. I did use pen and I did do a little bit of um, line variation just to pull it out a little bit. And we talked about working on your value chart for doing watercolor if you're a beginner right here. Thank you for watching part two of The Plastic Ocean. Have a happy holiday and look forward to seeing Santa. I'll be watercoloring Santa next. Thank you so much. It's my thumbs up and sponsor me. Bye.